the scoring punches sitting between Doris Burke and Andre. Thanks a lot for joining us and uh, tell us about your your summer league so far from the time that we saw you play your first summer league game in Utah and struggling a little bit with your shot to where you are right now. I mean uh, it was definitely a process. This has all been a process for me um, coming in uh, my first game being the first time I played 5 on 5 since my college basketball game. Wow. Uh, throughout the whole draft process, it was all one on nose and just doing different drills. So just getting back, to, being, getting back into the flow of things and getting back on 5 on 5 was just the start of my process. So it's all been an um, upward, upward battle and upward uh, hill for me, so I'm just enjoying it. Eight months ago today, you played your first college basketball game remarkably, and feels to me as an outsider you've had so many ups and some downs. Yeah. How have you tried to navigate all that and now especially as you move to the NBA you'll you'll have to continue to navigate it. Well it's, like I said before it's, it's all been a process. It's something that I've had to learn. Uh, I'm, I'm 19 years old and <laughs> uh, just trying to learn as much as I can from the people and the resources that I have um, with all the things that I've been through going in college from coming out of nowhere and just doing what I did and then bursting onto the scene yeah, is what yeah, you did. Yeah, right? and, then, uh, and then everybody uh, and then it started changing a little bit and then it, just just things that I've had to learn and um, like I said I'm, I'm just getting started and I'm excited about everything that's going on and I'm just I'm, uh, I'm super excited. Are you enjoying it and I wonder as you said you're 19 years old and you're stepping into a league tray where there is performance pressure and there are expectations can you give us some sense of how, you know, like that's not easy for a 19 year old. Oh, it's, it's definitely not easy, but uh, I've, I've trained my whole life. I worked so hard throughout this whole process and growing up just to get prepared for this moment. And uh, as of right now, um, I feel like I'm ready, but I know there's a lot of things I got to continue to get better at um, and just continue to work. I mean, uh -huh. continue, continue to do what I've gotten me here, so I'm excited. Okay. Trey, your dad played basketball at yeah. a high level and part of your lineage has dictated that you've always been around quality people, quality coaches and trainers. What kind of feedback has your dad given you in the increments that you started in your first summer league game that's helped you get to where you are now, where your last game was arguably your best one? Yeah, well, just to continue to do it, what's gotten me to this point. Um, playing the right way, playing with a, a sense of urgency, um, playing hard, uh, controlling things that I can control. I mean, I can't always control uh, if my shot's going down or anything like that, but I can always control my effort, uh, my communication, uh, making sure my teammates are always involved, things like that. Um, just controlling what I can control, and that's one of the main things that I've taken away from what my dad's giving me, because my shot wasn't falling early on, and uh, I'm still, uh, to be honest, I, I feel like I haven't shot the ball very well, even in Vegas. Um, but I know that's going to come, so just continue to control the thing I can control. I'll tell you what you did do. You played one heck of a down the stretch, down 27. You yeah. <laughs> you had the final, you affected the final seven baskets. So can you take us through a little bit of what that was like last night? 16 in the second half. Yeah, yeah. you were dynamite. Well, it was, just, it was just basically just trying to make the right play. Uh, wanted to make the right play. And uh, I just make the right play down the stretch and uh, do that. Have you spoken with your new head coach Lloyd Pierce and asked him about you know, your your learning curve and what kind of role he wants you to fill with the Atlanta Hawks? Yeah, I've, I've spoken with him a lot. Uh, actually, every day out here, um, even on game days, I've, I've asked to get in the gym with him. Uh, we've gotten shots up um, early each and every morning, um, even on game days, just working constantly in the gym with him, uh, picking his brain, trying to figure out how he wants his offense to be ran. and. Um, I mean, he, he's new uh, in Atlanta just like I am, so we're both experienced something. He was a teammate together. of Steve Nash in college oh, in Santa Clara. Yeah. yeah, no, we definitely had a lot of talks about that. Uh, <laughs> Steve Nash is my favorite player growing up, so getting the advice from that is, was awesome. All right, so I, I read this thing that Lloyd Pierce said, and all I could think about was Tony Parker and something Pop put him through when he first went to San Antonio, which was... He worked you out, Lloyd, in mm -hmm. the pre-draft. He said, I wanted to hit him, be physical with him. I wanted him to feel me. So can you yeah. tell us what that yeah. was like? <laughs> it was it was definitely different. Uh, getting into a one-on-one uh, -on -one battle with Coach, uh, with head in, my coach. in my workout was, was, something, was something fun. Uh, he pushed me, picking up 94 feet every wow. day, uh, trying to run off screens, being physical with me, different things like that, and just uh, being in the in the – the drills with me was something cool because I mean because Kruger I know he wants to do it but in college because Kruger 
<laughs> I want to target this. Coach Curry has it, the competitiveness. He wanted to do it. <laughs> well, what was that? What was it? No, I haven't heard of many head coaches that were yeah. throwing guys out like that. Yeah, no. Did it feel odd in any way for you? Oh, it definitely felt odd. It definitely yeah. felt odd. Uh, because Coach Pierce is, is, is awesome in that way. He definitely connects with his players. And uh, the way the way we, we connect already is, is something, something special. Yeah. Tell me about the Atlanta Hawks and, and how you see yourself in the big picture. That's a franchise that has great history, uh, has some, some winning history, but in the last several years has struggled. Uh, how do you approach getting that whole thing going? And you want to be part of a winning program. Yeah, I definitely do. I, I approach it a lot like I did going into Oklahoma, uh, where the program uh, in Oklahoma used to be, I mean, with Blake Griffin going there, Buddy Hill just come off of a Final Four year. But the year before I got there, didn't make the uh, NCAA tournament. And just me coming in and wanting to change the outlook of Oklahoma basketball. That's the same mindset of coming in um, in an organization like the Hawks and just trying to get back to winning. Because I know that's all the, the Atlanta Hawks fans want and this organization wants. You could point to any number of things that Steve, Wash, uh, Steve Nash did well. One of the rare guys to go 50, 40, 90, which is really as good as it gets in terms of consistency yeah. shooting from all three levels. What was your favorite aspect of what he did? Just how he was so cerebral, so so cerebral. Um, the way he knew how to control the game, control the pace of the game, get his teammates involved, but also know how to score from all three levels. Um, different things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of his. I, out of all the people, to be honest, that I've gotten to talk to um, and that have introduced themselves to me uh, this past year, I mean, he was one of the, the main people that I was so, like, super excited about meeting and talking to. And now that I can text him and ask him for advice or something crazy. So, but those are the main things, basically just how cerebral he is. Two-time MVP and does some work yeah. with some NBA players. Yeah. So you yeah. might, you might want to sustain that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> have you sure. heard from any of your Atlanta Hawk team mates, uh, Dennis Schroeder, or any of the guys that have, you know, played on the on the Hawks team during the regular season? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. I've, I've heard from, I mean, basically almost everybody. Uh, I've been. A lot of contact with, I mean, Ken Bazemore. I mean, Torian okay. Prince has been out here uh, a lot. Um, I mean, Dre, uh, DeAndre Embry. Uh, they've, they've all been out here, so just being in contact with them. Uh, and obviously, we got JC, John Collins, and Tyler on the right. team, so. Yeah, Collins is playing exceptionally well. So you ready to be a rookie and carry the little uh, Dora the Explorer backpack on your back? Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't know about carrying that <laughs> Dora the Explorer backpack, backpack around. No, nah, nah, That's not part that. of the deal sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I'm about to do a few things. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> Hopefully no popcorn in the car. Right, That's all right, right. right. Hey, you got to be careful. <laughs> got to listen to those vets. Got to, got to. Luckily, we're a very young team, so it's... Yeah. Hey, are you done for summer league? Do you think you'll be playing? Uh, well, right now, I don't know. Um, I don't know the process right. uh, of what, what coaching them want me to do. Honestly, I really wanted to play today, but uh, I mean, coach, coach thought it would be best in my interest not to not to play today and just to rest from this long, long few games that we've been playing. So. You're killing me. I was so excited to watch you in person. Trust right. me, I feel like I've made it. You see all these notes, right? You see all these notes I had on you, right? I know, I know, I know. I, I wish I could have played. I'm, 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 I'm real sad. You want to know what I have on my board about you? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so this is just some evaluations from some from some of your guys like Lloyd said I evaluate Trey on his ability to create separation whether he's using it in the pick and roll orchestrating our offense is he getting separation so like uh, all good stuff down here I promise you oh okay that, that's that's <laughs> nice I like that I like that thank you that was an incredible year at Oklahoma I mean the only person in NCAA history to lead the country in scoring and assists in just one year. How much pride do you take in your ability to do something nobody else did? I mean, I take a lot of pride in it. I mean, I hope hopefully one day, I mean, a kid is looking up to me right now wanting to, to change it, the game and wanting to do something special in college basketball like uh, like I did. And uh, that's, that's all I wanted to do, just be different. That's one thing about me is I always pride myself in being different. And uh, so leading the league in points and assists uh, in, in the country uh, was something different. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very proud of that.